Okay, today is a review of complex numbers and then a new day of basically a lot of factoring of complex numbers. All right, so here's complex numbers that we started with the other day, and why can't we leave it just like this? What's wrong with it as it is? Can't have square root square? Denominator, okay. So we would use the what what of that, conjugate of that to fix it. All right, so I'm going to just do a, oh, quick mention of the lab. That lab is going to be officially due on Friday. And remember, it's just basically, it should be a fun one. Don't miss out on, I mean, it's 20 points, you know? Like, why not get some points and have some fun? Don't just, like, think, oh, that's an easy one. I'll just put it off to the last second and then screw it up. Main reasons I see people screwed up, number one, is not because they have a bad picture. I'm sure you'll have a decent picture and you can write the formula of it. It's just that you won't answer the three questions that are underneath each one. Okay, so make sure you budget in a few minutes to answer those questions briefly, but... Uh, and the main thing I'm looking for is how did you create this cool picture you'll have pasted in right there, or screenshot it, or take a picture with your iPad, and then what was the, like, how did you get it to happen so that we can replicate it? And if you have to do things like zoom in, tell us that so that we can actually replicate it. Because what I'm going to have people do for grading this thing is actually take your directions and type it into their calculator and see if it actually looks as cool as they show. Okay, and if it doesn't look at all the same, you'll have a problem. All right, so uh, next thought is we have another lab that's also due. I'm going to try really, really hard to get them both graded on this Friday. Okay, I can't promise it though. Tough. Tides Lab is the other one. I know, it's been a while. So here we go. Look at this. And this is a reminder of, actually, we already did that one. Let's do another one that's like it. This one right here uh, is a reminder of what you did the other day. You, do you remember the, with the line over it thing? That means conjugate of, okay? So I actually encourage you to do them in this order. A is really easy. You just add them together. That should be easy for you, I hope. And then I would do C and D because when you do those two, I uh, and F, once you got those little building blocks, you'll use them when you answer B. Because B isn't as simple as it seems. You can't just put in 1 over C, which is root 2 minus I root 2, and then leave it. It'd be great, but you can't because the denominator has square roots. So you'll need the conjugate of Z, which is this right here, to be able to do that. All right, so answer A, B, C, D, E, and F. But I encourage you to do A, which is easy, C, D, and F first. Go back and do B and E once you've got the other ones done. Okay? Take you a couple minutes, but it'll help you remember what we were doing on Friday. And I'll pause while you try that one. Okay, even if you're not done, I'm going to start... And by the time I'm done, maybe you'll be done. Here we go. The first one, you're just having to add them together. So I'm not going to rewrite them. It's that and that being added. So that can add to that, and that makes two root twos. And that and that are opposites of each other. So when you add them together, they disappear. So that's it. Just two root two. How many had that one right? Okay, good. The next one, I said to skip B until you got the other ones done. So I'm going to follow that advice. So I'm going to go down to C and know what is the conjugate of Z. Well, here's Z. The conjugate of Z is just the exact same thing except with a plus in the middle. That way, when you multiply it by regular Z, good things happen. Okay, next one I'm going to do is D is in donkey. C times W. Instead of having to rewrite these, I'll just leave them up here and go first. Root 2 times root 2 makes root 4, which is 2. The outside and the inside happen to be conjugates, so therefore the outside's positive. The same exact thing as the inside is negative, and therefore they cancel. And then the lasts. The lasts here are that times that. Could you get the door, please? Thank you. And that makes negative i squared root 4. But some of those things can simplify. Negative i squared root 4 well, root 4 is really 2, and negative i squared makes positive 1. So this is a 2, 
And that's a positive 1 because there was two negatives. So that makes, makes 4. Any questions on that? Okay. And z, oh no, z times the last one here, z times its conjugate, isn't that, isn't w actually its conjugate? So when you take z times its conjugate, isn't that the exact same thing as z times w? I think it is, and it's 4. If you didn't notice that these were conjugates, I would understand if you just redid the problem and then you realize, oh, it came up to 4 again. Okay, now I'm going to go back and do B and E. Here's B, except you can't leave it that way. It's 1 over Z, but then you have square roots down there. So you got to multiply by its conjugate, but the cool thing is we just did that a whole bunch of times. And we know that when you multiply by its conjugate, root 2 plus I root 2, that the denominator, we already did that. We did it right here and right here, and it came out to 4. So the denominator of this puppy is 4. But what you might not have noticed is that the top has to be there. The top has to be the same exact thing. And therefore, the top is root 2 plus I root 2. Could you factor out the root 2s? Sure, but it's not going to really help because root 2 won't cancel with the 4. So there is your answer. Root 2 plus I root 2 all over 4. Any questions on that? Raise your hand if you had that part right. Most, but not all. Please do raise your hand if you actually have those right because it helps me gauge whether people are getting it. And if you're not raising your hand, it kind of makes you look like you didn't get it. And maybe you really did, and it's throwing off my counts. All right, the last thing is Z over W. And if I put Z over W, then the bottom is going to be, again, it's going to come out to that same conjugate. I'm going to have Z, which is root 2 minus I root 2, over W, which is root 2 plus I root 2. And I'll have to multiply both the top and the bottom by root 2 minus I root 2. That's the same thing I've multiplied a bunch of times, isn't it? And therefore, the bottom part's 4 again. What's top this time, though? Well, that makes root 4, which is 2. And this, the outside and the inside don't just cancel. The outside and the inside are 4i. Do I remember that right? Was it negative 4i? Can't remember. Here, I'll double check it. Negative 2i and negative 2i is negative 4i. Yep. I'm doing, I'm doing this top part right here. So negative 4i. And then the last is positive i squared root 4, which is positive times negative 1 times 2, which makes negative 2. And the 2 and the negative 2 cancel each other out. And it's all over 4. And can I leave it like that? Nope. I can simplify one last thing. The 4s cancel, and I get negative i. E was the most intense part of all. came out to negative i. Did anybody get that one right? All right. Like six people. All right. That is probably hard R2 level, maybe an easy R3. Okay, so if you can't handle the algebra, get with it. You're going to have to be able to handle it. All right, this next thing is called the fundamental theorem of algebra, and I am going to summarize what I want you to know about it right now, uh, and that's that basically if you have a power like this, this tells you how many roots or zeros it has. Do you remember that? When you move from solving things like this, and they never put the power of 1 on there, but there was one. There was only one answer for that kind. You know, I mean, there's multiple things that would solve this equation, but if uh, you're going to have roots, also known as x-intercepts, there'd only be one of them here. Then, when we move to x squared, those are parabolas. How many solutions did they always have? Two. And now, sometimes we cheated and said, Okay, it has two solutions like this. That's easy. There's two solutions. But what if it's just barely touching like that? Then it has one solution, but it was called a double root. Why were we doing that? Because there were two parts to the thing like this. 
and it might have been like x minus 1 and x minus 1. It was a double. There was one for this and one for that. Okay, so there's always been this telling you how many answers there should be. Okay, so if you had a problem like this, Do you get that this has got to have three answers, three solutions? Okay, but this is the important part. With complex numbers, as in you got imaginary numbers involved, they always come in packages of two. Why does that matter? Because if I said, okay, I know this thing has two roots because I graphed it, and it bounced here. If there was a bounce really happening right there, then that means that's two of your roots. That only leaves one left, and it's imaginary. I know that kid screwed up. Because imaginaries always have to come in sets of two. Why? If you do the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Do you remember that this is the part that where the negative square root happens? What's always in front of it? A plus and minus. You get how there's always two then? You're not going to have just one imaginary root. If there's one imaginary root, then there's another one that goes with it. If one of the imaginary roots is 5i, then what's the other one? Negative 5i. They always come in sets of two. Okay, so if there's any imaginary roots here, how many are there? Two. There's two imaginaries, then that leaves room for how many reals? One. Would you agree then that this one has to have one real root? At least one real root? Get, there can't be three imaginaries because these come in sets of two. Okay? Could there be four imaginary roots? No, because it's got a power of three, and therefore there's going to be three answers. So therefore there has to be one answer that's real. There could be two imaginaries. Could this thing have three real roots? Yeah, you can have sets of any number of real roots. Real roots, remember the graphing these things? You could go like, oh, it bounced here, and then it cut through there. So then a bounce is worth two, and a cut through is worth one. And you could make any combination of uh, numbers of real roots. You can have two, three, four, five, six, twelve, twenty-three. You can make any number for real roots. It's just your imaginaries have to be in sets of two. Okay, so then, imagine for a moment I had this, x squared plus 3x plus 5. How many roots does it have? Two. Could they be imaginary? Could there be only one imaginary? No, it has to be two imaginaries. If there's any imaginaries at all, it's got to be two. All right. What if it's to the power of five? Could they all be imaginary? No, so they have to come in sets of two. Could there be four imaginaries and one real? Could there be two imaginaries and three reals? Could there be four imaginaries and one real? Yeah. As long as you make it with sets of two on the imaginaries, two or four, okay, in this case. And that, so tell me, tell me this. Does this cross the x-axis? It has to. Does that make sense? Okay. Does this one cross the x-axis? X it could, or it could not. What if both of them come out to imaginary answers? Then I won't touch. All right. How about x to the 12th? Could it touch the x-axis? It could touch the x-axis. Could it not touch the x-axis? All the answers be imaginaries. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now let's actually solve a couple of these things. I'm, I would uh, call today Factor Palooza because it's like this giant festival of factoring. It's like every kind of factoring you've ever done all put into one day. So.
right now, I'd like you to copy this problem down right here. And I'm going to remind you of something called factor by grouping. I like to call it divide and conquer when I taught it. Because you can divide the problem in two parts. Factor this part. Just act like it's a totally separate problem. Just factor that. And then, completely separately, factor that. And then see what they have in common, and maybe you'll be able to factor it again. Try it without me. See if you can get this factored all the way, so to speak. I'll pause for a second while you do that. Okay, by now either you got it or you didn't. Did you notice that x squared went into both of these two in the front here? And then therefore I have x plus 5 left over. Did you notice on the other one a 2 goes into both of them? And I left over have an x plus 5. Do you think that's a coincidence that we have an x plus 5 in both of them? No. It's not a coincidence because we set it up so that this could be factored again. Do you notice that this is one big multiply problem, kind of like 2 times x? And this is one big multiplier problem, kind of like this was a 2 times 5. They both have something in common. They both have this in it, so I can factor it again. That x plus 5 comes out to the front, and what I have left, remember when you're factoring, technically you're dividing by that thing. I'm dividing by x plus 5. Cancel, 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 cancel. You see what's left? x squared plus 2. You're in honors pre-calc, so we can't just leave it there. I taught you this last year if you were in my class. Does anybody remember how to factor that x squared plus 2 further? All right, only one person remembers this, so therefore I'm going to go and start from the beginning on it. That can be factored again. And now you're thinking, you can't factor that. Yes, I can. And you will be able to also in a second. Okay. We'll start with a simpler one. What if it had been this? You all know how to factor that, right? Please tell me you know how to factor that. What is it? x plus 4 and x minus 4. Okay, good. If we're not, we have a long ways to go to get you up to speed. But I think that's good. Raise your hand if you're good with that. Okay, good. Then, here's the first way to change it and make it harder because you'll have to have imaginary numbers involved. I change that to a plus. And I know your teachers always say, well, you can't factor that kind. I lied. It's because you can factor it when you know more, and you now know we're going to know more. Who can factor this now? What do you think? You got it. One of my past students remembered. Yay. Why now? Yes, sir? Yeah, well, the reason it's wrong in the first place without the red eyes in there is because it would have come out to negative 16. And now, when you multiply that and that, you don't get negative 16 anymore. You get negative 16 and i squared, which makes it go to positive 16. So, I'll leave this one up there, in case you're still pondering that. So, what if I had x squared plus 25? Don't say it. Write it. Factor that. And we'll get to that kind I just showed you a second ago where the numbers aren't nice anymore, but it's not too tough. The one that's on the board, would you please factor it and show it to the person sitting next to you, rows 1 and 2, rows 3 and 4, rows 5 and 6. Show it to the person across from you. Okay, here we go. X and X, a plus and a minus. You can always start that way. Then all you got to do is take the square root of this and slap an I on it. Square root of that's 5. Ah. And why wouldn't it work the way it is? Because now it would give me negative 25. And now I need it to make 
positive 25, and therefore I need an i squared, and therefore I put an i on both of those, x plus 5i and x minus 5i. All right, now why did we do that? Because if this had said equals 0, and we actually wanted the answers, the roots, here we, in the old days, we would have had to say, oh, that's impossible, you can't do that. True, but now that you understand how complex numbers work, you can have an i, your answers really are these two things. Negative 4i would make this thing equal 0, and positive 4i would make this thing equal 0. So negative 4i and positive 4i are your roots. Let me ask you this. Are they your x-intercepts? In the past, they were always the x-intercepts, the roots, the zeros. Will those actually touch? No, because they're imaginaries. Imaginaries don't touch. The ones that touch are called real. Okay? So, back to this problem. Ah, I really hate that this thing keeps popping up. I don't know where it's coming from. Stop that. I'm trying to hit the back arrow. There we go. In this problem, I said it wasn't factored all the way. This is factored all the way, and it's a real answer. These are going to be imaginaries, and it doesn't come out nice, because you can't take the square root of 2, but you can. x and x, plus and minus. I said you can start that way every time. But if I can't take the square root of 2, then I just write the square root of 2. But that's still going to come out to positive. No, that's going to come out to negative 2. And I want it to come out to positive 2. So how do I make it work? I throw in an i. Notice me putting it in front of the square root. x plus i root 2 and x minus i root 2. Now, what are the actual final answers? That's just factoring. The answers are x equals negative 5. And is that real or imaginary? Yeah. That's one real root. And since I know it's got three answers, there must be, if there's only one real root, what? Two imaginaries. Okay, and if the two imaginaries then are negative i root 2, and this one, positive i root 2. There's one, two, three answers. Two Imaginaries and one real. All right. Plain old fashioned factoring. Factor it the old fashioned way. How about you not destroy everybody else's learning by just telling them the answer? I'm happy that you know it. I'm just asking that you write it down. Because once you hear the answer, you don't think anymore. X and X. And then all you have to do is find something that multiplies to 5 and adds to 6. And therefore, what? There we go. Okay. Are the answers real or imaginary? Real. That means you're actually going to touch the graph. True or false? True. So touch the graph at negative 1 and what? Negative 5. Okay. Is this a U-shape or a frown face shape? A U-shape because there's no negative in front. Remember that? Okay. Okay. Now, if this had been a 3 right here, it wouldn't have factored. Uh, so that means that you can't do it, right? Eh. Do you remember, nope, this doesn't involve a little German boy, this answers this question. If you can factor it, you should. If you can't factor it, no, it's not quit. No, it's not give up math. Quadratic formula. Ah, there we go. If you can factor, you should. If you can't factor, quadratic formula. Do it. It won't take you long if you know the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Can be sung to the happy birthday song if you want. <laughs> x equals plus or minus. Oh, no, I can't definitely sing it with two people singing it. That would really make me confused.
X equals plus or minus. I did it to the tune of uh, that sign, the weather outside is frightful. I got it to that too. Oh, the weather outside is frightful. Yeah, something about chest. And then I did it to chestnuts roasting on an open fire. But anyway, so you can do this to almost anything. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times 1 times 3 all over what? 2a, which is 2 times 1. Okay. So x, x equals ne quiet, please. negative 6 plus and minus. This next part comes out to a positive number. What does that mean? There's not a square root of a negative in there for? They're real answers. Okay, so just because you can't factor it doesn't mean they're imaginary. It means that the answers aren't nice, but they're real numbers. Okay. So, 6 plus or minus the square root of uh, 36 minus 12, which is what, 24? All over 2. Did you leave it like that? No. Good, because you should make this a little simpler and go root 6 and root 4, which is 2 root 6. Negative 6 plus and minus 2 root 6 all over 2. This is on the top 20, by the way. That's one of the reasons it's there, because it's a lot of grinded out, canceling stuff. Do you get that there's 2s in both parts? 2 comes out, and you get negative 3 plus and minus root 6 all over 2. 2s cancel. There's your two answers. Are they real or imaginary? They're real. Some people get confused because it has a square root in it. It's got to be square root of a negative to be imaginary. Okay, so those are real numbers, real solutions. How many solutions was I expecting to have? Two because of that. If there had been an imaginary solution, then what? Then there'd have to be another imaginary. That would be two imaginaries because they come in packages of two, kind of like the deer that run across in front of you on the highway. While the first one goes across and you're like, oh, look at the pretty deer, then the other one's running in front of you at that exact moment and you smash into it. It happens all the time. It's like a dis perfect distraction technique. If I do like this, you know, like people look, ah, oh, see, you looked up at my hand, didn't you? You know, like you'll really look at it, you have to, and then the other deer runs in front of you. It's their evil plan. So there's, there's always two deer. And actually, it's not true. I've seen solo deer, but it does happen a lot. That's why they tell you to watch for it. Okay, so there's one more kind of factoring. Aren't you excited? All right. Here's the last kind. Now, I want to warn you that this one could have been factored by grouping. I'm just choosing to do it with an easy one because I don't want your first long division in a long time to have been super hard. So this one's doable with grouping. All right, first, just for the fun of it, would you, grab, would you factor this by grouping? We'll see what the answer is. Then I'll show you how it can be done with long division. Don't look like you're actually doing anything. Utilize finger or use stylus or something. Factor that by grouping. Yes, factor by grouping. You missed, uh, you missed what I said. I figured there was some reason. All right, Mr. D.H., tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Oh, well, first you got to split it. I like it. Keep going. I start with the left side. Awesome. What do you have left? Nice. And the other side? Nice. These are in common, and therefore... Nice. All right, let me ask you this. If I set that if I set that equal to 0, how many answers would I have? Two imaginaries and one real. So would it be nice to be able to factor it one more time you were saying, Mr. DH? Nice. 
that's factored all the way. Cool. And there's our solutions. Now, there is another way to factor it. And the reason I even bring it up, because you're like, well, can I, why can't I just do that? Because some can't be factored by grouping. Like, you couldn't do this. It only works when there's even numbers. Okay, so what if it had five terms? I'm not going to redo the problem. I'm going to leave the same problem on the board and say, how do you do this with long division? Well, we just figured out that x plus 3 is one of the factors, right? Just so you know, when you do long like this, let me get this out of here. When you do long division, the thing on the outside here doesn't need to be in parentheses. But they'll say, they'll, we'll always tell you, this is the nice part, in higher algebra, we made you actually figure out what number must go into it, and then you do the long division with it. But we're going to tell you, like I just showed you, that x plus 3 went into it. I wouldn't have said x plus 3, though. I would have said the answer was negative 3. Negative 3 is a factor, I would say. And you'd have to be smart enough to go, oh, so x plus 3 would have been the factor, the root, was negative 3. Do you get the difference? If I tell you negative 3 works, then you'd write x plus 3. Everybody set this up right now. That implies on your paper, with your hand, or your stylus, or your pencil. Okay? No, you don't. You need to write it down. write and think or write then think. I'm fine with either, but not just, I'm going to sit and think is not okay. Got to stay with me. Because some people use that as a cover for, I want to think about my girlfriend or my car or my job or... All right. <laughs> fine. My cat. Okay, fine. Anyway... Do you remember, who remembers what goes there to start solving this problem? X squared, very good. Why? Because X squared times this makes the first term. X squared times the X makes X to the third. Now, you can't just do it to one of them and not the other. You with me? Good. All right, so what's next? Mr. K. Take the x squared and, okay, do you have this on your screen? Excellent, thank you. Now, I'll tell you the next part then. x squared times the 3 makes 3x squared. Surprisingly, it matches up with this other one perfectly. Then, this is important, a lot of people forget this. You've got to change these signs. I know right now you might be thinking that's really dumb, but when one of them is positive and one of them is negative, it makes a big difference. You've got to go through and change both signs to the opposite of what they are, and then you're adding them. I know in this case you, should, you could have just said, oh, don't they just cancel? Yeah, but on harder problems, you have to have changed both signs first, then you add them down. So this x to the third minus the x to the third does cancel and leaves me nothing. 3x squared and the minus 3x squared leaves me nothing. So how am I supposed to continue if I have nothing down there? You bring stuff down. No, you can't just quit. All right, Mr. GC, next. Good, so what do you think goes up there? All right, I'll put a 2 up there, and we'll see how well that works. 2 times the x is 2x squared. All right, good. It's just 2x. So it's going to work. 2 times 3 makes 6. Notice you make them opposites before you finish it off, and then you add down. And this becomes 0 and 0. Do you get if you end with a 0? That means your long divide worked, or synthetic worked. Okay, so then, what does that mean? That means we took this, and we factored it into that times that. Now, it's just a different way of factoring, and again, why didn't we just do it with grouping? Because this method can work for any number of terms. You can have seven terms, and you can't divide that and conquer it, but you can factor it with long division. 
All right. Now let me show you your homework and show you that you've already learned everything you need to know for it. Ready? There's only one that's a stretch, but it's not going to, like, hurt you. It's not impossible stretch. Okay. Ready? So this was our assignment day one, which we have not graded yet, but that doesn't mean we won't grade it. Here's our assignment day I passed it, sorry. Right there, assignment day two. So your assignment, all of these, all of these are to be factored. The very first thought on that first one is, wait a minute, I can't factor it. It won't work. You try it and it won't work. So how are you supposed to factor it? Well, when you can't factor it, quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. All right. Next one. That one. Once again, if you can't factor it, quadratic formula. But this one might factor. Okay. It's up to you. If you don't want to, you don't feel like factoring it, use a quadratic formula. It's fine. This one, though, you can't use a quadratic formula because it's not a quadratic, it's a cubic. Then we got to go to our other ways. What's option A? Factor by grouping. Will it work? Yes, it will, actually. Um, but, oh, wait a minute. No, this one doesn't factor by grouping. Hmm, it doesn't. You can trust me. I wouldn't do that to you. It doesn't factor by grouping. This one does factor by grouping, by the way, but this one won't. So then what do you got to do? Long division. Good point. All right. Then, once you got it factored, notice it says completely factor it over the complex numbers. So let's say you get x squared plus 1 and x plus 7. I know that's not it, but let's say it was. Do you get how it's not factored all the way? you got to factor this part one more time and go x plus 1 and x minus 1. No, that would make negative 1. I, I, throw on the i's if it's not coming out right. All right. Now, okay, the commentary in the back may be humorous to you, but it's starting to annoy me, so please stop. On number 47, it says, hint, i is one of the zeros. Now, this was a little too uh, obscure for me to, like, ha have you figure it out, because it took me a long time to figure out. I don't know if you would. I did hint at it a bunch of times. Do you remember me saying, if there's one imaginary solution, there's actually two, and therefore, if i is one of the factors or one of the zeros, then what's also a zero? Negative i. And if i and negative i both worked, what factor did they come from? X, yeah, yeah, X plus I and X minus, what was that as actual numbers without I's? Because let me tell you, if you try to do your long division with I's in it, it won't work. Don't use I's in here. Yes, X squared plus one. Do you get how that's the one that would have had X plus I and X minus I in it? All right, so that was a little bit too obscure for me. So I needed to give you a little nudge on that one. This 48, this challenge, go for it if you want a challenge, but it is a challenge question. Next, only the top one of these three. And here's the hint of all hints. When you're doing this, you'll notice, wait a minute, you've only told me about four of the factors. And yet I know that it's got a fifth factor. Don't just assume, oh, it's got to be an imaginary one. Not necessarily, because you can't have single imaginary factors, can you? No, it's got to be imaginary. It's got to be in fat sets of two. So here's the hint that really helps. We're trying to write an equation for this, and some of it is this simple. x minus 2 and x plus 2 is part of your factored equation. Why? Because, see, x is plus and minus 2. There. That's part of your answer. But, and it's a big but, there are, there are, there is a local maximum on the graph at 2, 0. Let me just help you see, see that. It does that. By drawing the picture, does that remind you of something that it's 
bouncing there, and therefore that should change your equation. If it's bouncing at that root, local maximum, at first I was like, well, so what if it's the top of a peak? Oh, if the top of the peak happens to also be hitting the x-axis, that's a double root. So there's my hint for number 51 that makes it doable. All right, now these are all doable. I know you might not see it right the second, but once you write the equation out, you'll realize I'm missing a root, and then you'll find it with that last clue. Okay, and that's all I have for you. You do not need to do 52 or 53.